welcome to Eugene's Speech Language Therapies videos. I'm Sierra. This week I wanted to talk to everyone about the speech in speech therapy. So even though speech language pathologists cover a wide range of treatments and disorders, one area that we do work in is speech. Any babies who were born with developmental disorders, anyone who's experienced an anatomical difference, like for instance, cleft palate. Someone who's had a stroke or a brain injury or who has a progressive disease like ALS is going to be affected. So the most important thing that we do when we notice that someone has a speech problem is to diagnose it. And there are two separate areas. One is called apraxia of speech and one is called dysarthria. Children and adults can both have apraxia of speech. Children have it developmentally, and adults typically acquire it after an injury. Apraxia of speech is unique because the articulation errors aren't consistent. So if you're trying to say the word dog, it might come out og, da, ah, and it is different every time. And that's one of the markers of apraxia of speech. So you can imagine it would be very difficult to understand someone who has this disorder. Now, what's happening is the brain knows what it wants to say, but the motor plan isn't being executed. So when the brain says, I want to say dog, by the time it gets to the articulators or the mouth, it comes out in a different way. Now, if you don't have apraxia of speech, that means that you have dysarthria. Dysarthria is a physical problem. So there's actually a weakness or a paresis, decreased range of motion, something going on with the actual anatomy. Now there are a lot of different types of dysarthria. So there's a whole long list and it's our job to figure out which one of those that you have. A good example of this is if you've had a stroke. A lot of people know someone's had a stroke if they have a, a droop on their lip like this. Well, there's a paresis. There's decreased range of motion, decreased strength, maybe decreased sensation. And that results in slurred speech. So once you're diagnosed and we know exactly what's happening with you, we will create a plan to treat you and then we'll treat you in therapy. Now, if it's a weakness, we do strengthening exercises. Those are dependent on the part of the body that needs to be strengthened. So if your tongue is weak, and you'll know that if you stick it out and it automatically goes to one side, you know the one side is weak and one is stronger. And so you work on strengthening that. There are a lot of different ways you can do this. You can do some uh, resistance exercises, you know, pushing against the cheek, things like that. You can work on tongue coordination, saying buttercup, buttercup, buttercup over and over again. And then you move those exercises into speech with individual sounds and then saying words and moving all the way up to conversation. Some of the dysarthrias affect the voice as well and you can do some vocal therapy to improve your vocal quality. It might be having to relearn how to say parts of words and words correctly and just practicing those every day. We can also do things like massage where we massage the muscles to try and increase the range of motion. One treatment that I do is called Vital Stim. It's a neuromuscular electrical stimulation, and that can actually not only work the throat for the swallow, but you can put it on the facial muscles, and it can stimulate the facial muscles, and it will cause them to contract, and then you can do your facial exercises. This just gives you a good idea of what, is, what goes on behind the scenes when someone has a speech problem. So I definitely suggest finding a speech therapist if you know someone who needs help or if you notice your child is having difficulty being understood. So thanks for listening and check back next week. Goodbye.